What's up makeup minions? I'm Kim Witty from Witty Artistry and welcome back to my channel. If you aren't already, please hit that subscribe button below to become part of the Witty Artistry family. I am so pumped for the new Guardians of the Galaxy, so let's get this Rocket Raccoon makeup tutorial going. Prime your skin with some MAC Fix Plus. And then using an eyebrow pencil, I'm going to be drawing all of the outlines of Rocket Raccoon's shapes in his face and all of his clothes. Make sure you're following a reference image when you're drawing these shapes. Rocket kind of wears this cool armored little vest and his face is divided into color blocks that are his eyebrows and his nose and little muzzle. Using my handy dandy sponge, I am covering all of my exposed skin with a medium brown color. Now I'm just filling in all of Rocket's clothing with a mixture of orange and brown. So I wanted to imitate the raccoon's foofy eyebrows and face shape, so I'm going in with a white body paint over my eyebrows and dragging it down my cheeks. Add a few paint strokes between your big eyebrows. I'm adding in some texture just by adding some strokes to make it look more like fur on my little eyebrow foofs and my sideburns. Raccoon sideburns, that is what we're calling them. When you're painting fur, it's kind of just a test of patience. So you want to paint a base coat layer, which I did with the light brown, and then you want to go in with a dark color followed by a light color. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a dark brown and I'm following the direction of a fur pattern on a raccoon. In order to paint really realistic fur, you want to make sure you are always following a reference image so you can both match the fur color, but also the fur direction. After you're done with your face, fill in your neck and your arms with the same patterning. In order to add some dimension to my fur, I am mixing white, brown, and yellow body paint to create a highlight color for the fur pattern. Like I said earlier, you're just creating layer upon layer of different fur colors that slowly build up dimension. Not only do you want to be conscientious of the direction that you are moving the strokes in, but you also want to make sure you are keeping the strokes thin and small. You can achieve this just by using a really fine detail brush and applying very light pressure. So when most people think of a raccoon, they just think of black and white, but they actually have like a bunch of nuances of color. As you've seen, I've built up brown, but now I'm going over all the fur with a light gray. Now we're going all bandito and we got to make our raccoon have the cool dark little circles around the eyeballs. So I just mixed together black and dark brown and I am going in very, very carefully around my eyes in small little accent strokes. This is like my favorite black out of all my eyeshadows because it's so dark and I'm just covering up my lids and feathering around my eye sockets. Creating my own cool tone gray, I mixed together the paints that I just showed and I'm going around the edges of his apron costume thing, body armor. I don't know what it is. Just look at the reference image and make sure you're following similar shapes. Rocket Raccoon, bringing in a little bit of love song for you guys. With the same color, I am sort of just chiseling out the edges of where his shoulder pads attach to his chest armor. His shoulder pads and his chest armor seem to be made of like a cracked old leather, so I'm using the edge of a sponge and sort of just stippling on some dark browns, some yellows, and then a highlight on top. Outline the edges of those shoulder pads with a darkish gray color. Being sure to follow a reference image, I'm using a slightly darker brown orange color and I'm stippling over his entire leather armor and then adding some highlights. Do not forget to add your highlights because this will really add some dimension to your piece. And unfortunately, I sort of painted this off camera, but I'm adding little metal plates and adding a highlight on top of his little metal collar thing. When you're doing highlights on something, you want to make sure you use a really narrow brush so you can be very precise. Over time, you want to gradually lighten the color and then go over all the highlights again and sort of just smudge them out so they become a little less stark. 
Luckily, I painted some of these guys on camera, um, but I'm basically just going over all of the high points of the metal with a gray, and I'm adding little rivets, just following the reference image for his body armor. Add some details to the shoulder pads. Alright, so here is the magical finishing touch on the clothes. You use a gray eyeshadow and feather underneath all of the clothes where the shadow would be cast on your skin. Well, in this case, fur. Whenever you're doing a long body paint, you want to be strategic about uh, when you paint stuff. In this case, I left my muzzle for last because I was hungry. Okay, so one thing I really wanted to try to achieve is how raccoons have those foofies that come out of the side of their face sort of into a triangular shape. So I decided to use some of my white needle felting wool to try to incorporate that into the body paint to get that look. Using some prosate adhesive, I am lightly applying it above my eyebrows. Very important there. You do not want prosate in your eyebrows. And then down the sides of my cheeks, and I am applying little fuzzy bits of the wool and feathering it outward and cutting it to whatever shape I need to get that little triangular point. So fabulous. When laying hair, you want to start with the part that is farthest back and farthest underneath and then build upwards so it sort of blends the edges into the fur in this case. I was having way too much fun with this wool. <laughs> so glad I decided to add it. This was actually the first time I incorporated something three-dimensional into a body paint that actually looked good, so you should try it. The wool is a lot of fun. To make the transition from the body paint to the wool look a little bit more realistic, I went in with a very similar body paint color to the wool and feathered it up by the edges. I'm adding in some finishing texture on the muzzle. Now I get to be all cute and make a little raccoon nose with some black and then I am stippling on gradual layers of gray and white to create little highlights. Clean up the edges because nobody's perfect. And I'm just adding in a little bit of gray into my mustache and my little beard and my eyebrows. And then adding some black on my nose. I'm adding in some small little details around my muzzle and on top of my nose by mixing some black and gray and adding little hairs and also little freckles. It'd be ideal if you had black lipstick here, but I do not, so I'm going over my lower lip with a black body paint. I'm serious guys, I was having way too much fun with this body paint, so oh man, just just trust me on the wool, it's, it's too much fun. I am just darkening up the edges of my muzzle with the dark brown to make me look more like a raccoon than I did before. Add some white tips to the top of your ears. And add in the final touch by using some dental acrylic teeth to make some little raccoon fangs. And you're done! Go find your buddy Groot and save the galaxy. Thanks so much for watching guys. Please leave me a comment below if you want to watch more Guardians of the Galaxy characters. And feel free to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Witty Artistry family. You guys are awesome and I cannot wait for the second movie!